They 
continues to make regular trips every week, load up the car with the kids and family members to celebrate Murdy's life. Murdy was never blessed with speech nor with full mobility. Nonetheless, he was special to all who were privileged to love and care for him over the years. Yesterday, I heard one after the other of those caregivers come, all those 60 years. And they said with tears pouring down their faces, they could hardly get through it. And they apologized, and of course we said, no, no, apologize, it's okay. But they wanted to share how precious a gift Murdy was to the Mitchener Center. He was one of the ones when they closed down that area at the Mitchener Center just recently, who had moved to Calgary, broke his heart. That was so you can imagine after 60 years. But even here, in the center that he was in here in Calgary, closer to his family, so they could of course spend more time with him. Even here, they said, people came from there, from that uh, special center, and said that he was the most special person who touched their lives so deeply, who celebrated life. His care needs were great, and so he needed that special care. But when his family would go and see him and, and take him out for, for rides, because when they, the thing that was really important to him was trains. He loved trains. I don't know about you, but I grew up in a railway family, CPR family. And my greatest joy as a young kid was to get my dad to drive us up to the railway tracks and park and listen to those trains to feel the vibration of those trains going by. I tell you what, it's a great experience. So I, I related when they were describing Murray's life and how much he loved trains. And um, the family was celebrating how every, it was very, you know, much the same each time they got together with them. They had to have tin bits, they had to go for ice cream, and they had to experience Murphy's over-the-top excitement when he experienced the power and the noise of speeding locomotives. His family said, he's freed of all pain and suffering, no longer bound by his frailties. Murdy has answered the whistle's call, and they had the final whistle, the train whistle, blow at the end of the service. And he's boarded that final train. Murdy has answered the whistle's call, reunited now with his grandma, grandpa, his family members that have gone on. He remains forever in the care of the Lord's everlasting love. Murdy's favorite songs and hymns, he, he had a deep faith had a deep faith. He loved blessed assurance, and so he sang blessed assurance. And he especially loved it is well with my soul. In all of his struggle, it is well with my soul. He celebrated God's gift of life, God's amazing unconditional love and grace. And then the final song was another one that I, I just couldn't believe it found out that Murray loved this hymn too. Uh, Beyond the Sunset. Remember Michael Virgil Brock? I, I had the privilege of one of my early meetings that I did in Saskatoon. I was part of a, a, a large revival in Saskatoon. And Virgil Brock was the song leader. He was very old then. I was a kid. He was very old then. But boy, when he sang Beyond the Sunset and some of these other songs that he wrote, it just stirred me so deeply. And so the last thing yesterday for Murdy was beyond the sunset. What a celebration. Folks, the celebration attitude comes from a spirit filled with joy. That's why people like Murdy can celebrate in all their struggles and their pain and their sorrow. That's why we can celebrate. In the midst of our struggles and, and deep, deep 
pain that we go through as human beings, you and I both know that that's the case. But we've also discovered something, that one of the great joys of the Christian faith, one of the great joys of this church, Pastor Michael hit on it earlier, it's changed lives, transformed lives. We know why we are here. There's no doubt about it around here. Some people like it. Here you are. Some people don't. There they go. That's <laughs> the way it is. Michael and I have said it over and over again. Michael's been here 35 years. Awesome. Just about 35. 35? Yeah. I've been here 23 years now. So, say we're committed. <laughs> Yesterday I said we should be committed. <laughs> but see, we love you guys and we love this church and one of the reasons is because we know why we're here. I hear people ask me all the time, why don't you guys sell that property and move out to the suburbs? No. It'd be so much easier out there. I've been there, folks. I've been to the suburbs. <laughs> I'd rather be here. It's okay to live in the suburbs. Yes. But I want to be where the action is. Yes. This is a great place to be. But you know what's funny? In the reading this morning, I, I deliberately chose um, the NLT, the uh, New Living Translation, for that reading. I use it a lot on Sunday night. But wouldn't you know it? This time, I will usually use the message on Sunday morning. And this time I read the message after I had already picked the NLT to be up on the screen in the reading today. And I read the message and I thought, oh man! <laughs> it comes across way better there. <laughs> By this time a lot of men...